Before we begin, I want to let you know that our preacher today will be Julia Dominic. I think many of you know Julia. She's a member of Saints Luke and James on the path to ordination and currently studying at Virginia Theological Seminary. So we're really glad that she can uh, join us virtually today and offer the sermon. Thank you. Blessed be the one holy and ever-living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's join in saying Psalm 1 together. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Holy One, and they meditate on that law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked, they are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Holy One knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin, you shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A Gospel reading from Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? 
They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to answer him, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us pray. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad Va Ahavta et Adonai Eloheka Boho Lavavka Uveho Nafshika Uveho Meodeka Amen. I begin with the words found in Deuteronomy 6 that mirror the beginning of Matthew's gospel message for us today. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, or muchness, as I learned in my first semester of Hebrew last year. I share this prayer because it is infused into the marrow of my bones for which I am grateful. It helps to center me daily in a time where the world seems to be swirling around in a chaotic vortex. Jesus knew that the religious leaders also embodied this prayer and he called upon their knowledge to make his point. But first, let's set the scene for this gospel interaction. Shortly before this pericope, Jesus came to town on a donkey. He entered the temple and cleansed it. He cleansed it by throwing a justified fit upon what he came in in the temple, the selling of goods and money changers. Jesus then paused and began to heal the sick and the lame. Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem and behavior in the temple got the attention of the Pharisees and Sadducees. It was at this time that we remember the gospel lesson from last week, where the religious leaders tried to ensnare Jesus in their web of power. They wished to discredit him in front of the crowd. Jesus, a step ahead, reminded them and us today to give to the emperor what is the emperor's and give to God what is God's. Angry that Jesus had outsmarted him, the Pharisees came to him today with the gospel question. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Now I can only imagine that after the lines of questioning that Jesus received from the leaders throughout Matthew's parables, he was both amused by and irritated by them. But Jesus was a devout Jewish man and knew that the answer they were looking for was found in the prayers said twice daily by the followers. The Torah contains 613 commands, some having more importance than others. Jesus replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. But Jesus did not stop there. He went on to reference today's Hebrew scripture reading from Leviticus about the care of the neighbor saying, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus answered with the lessons taught by the religious leaders and the lessons that we learn today. So the second half of the commandment gospel passage has me thinking, love your neighbors as yourself. How do I love myself? And is the way I love myself reflected on the way I love my neighbor? Oofta. 
Just this week, I gave myself some grief about my physical appearance and what I should be doing better. Just this week, I compared myself to a classmate and the gifts that they have that are so amazing. Just this week, I mentally othered a person that I felt was being oppressive in a moment of frustration. Just this week, I was angry at organizations and institutions that continue to place marginalized people in harm's way just to earn a buck. Just this week, I was angry about character assassinations so prevalent in our politics. Just this week. Just this week. So are my neighbors loving me the same way that I love myself? Yikes. Reflecting on the Hebrew scripture of last week, we learned about being God's chosen people and making a choice to choose God over worldly trappings. We also learned from last week's gospel that we are not made in the emperor's image, but made in the image of God. So I could bury myself in a sea of doubt and regret, but that's not what God asks of us. God is asking us to choose love. How do I love when love can seem so hard? It is here that I'm reminded of Imago Dei. The premise behind Imago Dei is that we, as creatures of God, reflect the image of God. If I reflect God's image, then my neighbor is also a reflection of God's image. If I'm a reflection of God's image, then the person who oppresses me is also a reflection of God's image. So I return, how do I love my neighbor? I was blessed to be present in a webinar with Dr. Katherine Meeks from the Absalom Jones Center for Racial Healing and presiding Bishop Michael Curry. One of the discussion topics was how to love our neighbors when they are doing things that hurt us or our siblings in Christ or our earth. Bishop Curry's response was, we must learn to kneel and stand at the same time. Loving our neighbor does not mean to agree with behavior that you feel is hurtful. It does not mean to stand down to systems of oppression. It means first to go to God in prayer, kneeling before God and choosing God to be your focus, and also to be aware of the Holy Spirit that surrounds you when you begin to speak. With your mind set on God, stand and speak with your neighbor, remembering that we are never alone. Lately, I've been having difficult and uncomfortable conversations about systemic racism, LGBTQ rights, and the upcoming election. When preparing to respond, I envision a space between myself and the person that I'm talking to. And I envision that this space is filled with God's grace, remembering that God's grace can never be earned, but instead is a gift from God. In that pool of grace, I am reminded that the person across from me reflects the image of God. Bishop Curry also reminded us in the webinar that we are called to practice agape, an unselfish love that seeks good and others' well-being. Maybe that this pool of grace is a connection of the holy between you and me. When we come together to have difficult conversations, we may not leave having changed the other person's mind, but maybe we come to know more about the other person by hearing their story. Perhaps it is in knowing them deeper that we can love them more. Maybe loving them more allows us to see the reflection of God in them. God chose you. God chose me, 
Every day we have the incredible opportunity to choose God too. By choosing God, we are choosing love. By choosing to love God, we are called to love ourselves and our neighbors. Remember, you belong to God. You are beloved. You are chosen. You are enough. Love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Julie Broninger. I have been a member of the St. James Parish for over 14 years. I've been on the uh, vestry a few times at St. James and now I'm on the vestry of the combined St. James and St. Luke's group. Back when I was introduced to St. James, I was looking for a new church community. I had come from the Catholic tradition and there were some good things that I got out of my Catholic faith and, and by attending church. But there were also practices in the Catholic Church that I didn't describe to and I can't describe to. Um, they just don't fit with my value system. So I went looking for a new church community and a very good friend of mine introduced me to St. James. It didn't take long for me to realize that St. James on the Parkway was going to be my new church home. I found it liberal in the way that I wanted it and needed it to be. I found it accepting, which was beyond what I would have hoped or could imagine was possible. And I found it to be welcoming, affirming, and sowing justice in many ways. In time, I knew that I was uh, being led to Education for Ministry, or EFM. This is something that I hadn't ever experienced in the Catholic faith, in the Catholic tradition. So it, it was, that's partly why it intrigued me, but I also really felt led by the spirit to it. So I went on another journey looking for an EFM group and gratefully was led to St. Luke's. That was a tremendous gift for me in many, in many ways, on many levels. In the four years, I learned a lot, certainly. My faith deepened, absolutely. And I had the opportunity to meet many outstanding women that were part of these uh, EFM groups over those four years. I also had opportunities, opportunities to attend service at St. Luke's and to learn more about your outreach ministries and uh, noticed that there are some ministries that we hadn't been offering at St. James and I thought would be really good for us to be, uh, have available to us. So when it came time to select a new church home for our congregation, I was happy to see that St. Luke's was on the list and being a member of the vestry, it was very important to me that I maintain a neutral stance so that um, I did, wasn't feeling like I was swaying things any way or another. So I, you know, I held back at times. And so it was really exciting to me to see that St. Luke's came to the top of the list because in many ways I see our two parishes, our two congregations as having kindred spirits. It also represented an, an opportunity to reconnect with those friends that I'd made through my four years at EFM and get to know some new friends. More importantly, the strong focus on social justice means a lot to me and is has been a big draw and clearly because we've now been consolidated it was really important to many other people too. So it hasn't been that long since we've been consolidated into one but in that short amount of time it's become very clear to me that what each parish has been able to do individually together our impact is going to be multiplied not just doubled but multiplied. I feel it very strongly. I feel it in my heart. I just know that that's our journey. That's where we're headed. So when I received my pledge card for this year's stewardship campaign, there was no question in my mind whether I would fill it out or not. I just did it. And for those who know me well, I'm not always very good at following up on things and certainly not right away. So it's amazing on many levels that I just pulled my card out of the envelope I filled it out, I bumped up my monthly donation a little bit, I put it back in the envelope and I, I was ready to mail it the next day. So I invite you to prayerfully consider what your pledge is going to be for this year's stewardship campaign. And think of it really as an investment. It's an investment in the mission of Saints Luke and James. It's an investment in our parish's financial health and well-being. And even more importantly, it's an investment in being God's heart and voice in the world. Amen. Let's affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Holy One, in you we live and move and have our being. You call us to be your hands and feet, your heart and voice in the world. Through your grace at work in us, may justice roll down like a river and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Help us bring healing to our broken world. Blessed Creator, you love the world you have made. Guide us to find and embrace effective measures to halt the spread of COVID-19. Help us to care for the hardest hit communities. Protect all who work to keep us safe. Merciful God, our hope is in you. Redeeming God, guide us as we elect our leaders. May they act with wisdom, promote the dignity of every human being, and serve the common good. Benevolent God, our trust is in you. Inspiring God, bless our clergy as they follow Jesus in the way of love. We remember Michael, our presiding bishop, Craig, our bishop, Larry, William, and Morris, our clergy, the lay leaders of Saints Luke and James, and all who minister to your people in the church without walls. Loving God, our trust is in you. Reconciling God, open our eyes to see the effects of racism in all its forms. Heal our blind spots. Heal the harm racism has done to your people. Give us insight and courage to dismantle racism and build up the beloved community. Compassionate God, our hope is in you. Saving God, bring comfort and healing to all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for Ashley, Barbara, Ben and Beth W, Bill, Brittany, Carl, Charlie, Colleen, Dan, David S, the DeVore family, Frank, Fred, Gail, Harper, Jean, Jim and Meredith, John and Liz, Kathy B, Kathy, Kurt, Kurt H, Liz, Margaret and Jerry, Marcello, Marlis, Mary Ann, Molly, Nancy, Nell, Rick, Riley, Ryan, Sarah S, Shauna, Theo, Sumatra, Virginia, and Zania. Please add your own names. Merciful God, our hope is in you. Bless our dear ones who have gone before us, that your will for them may be fulfilled as they continue in their life in you. We remember Bob Weiss, Dave Benson, Marge Day, and Stephanie Lanning. Please add the names of those you are remembering. Bring comfort and healing to all those who are grieving. Merciful God, our trust is in you. Empowering God, help us put on our spiritual protective, personal protective equipment to do the work you have given us to do. The helmet of salvation to shield our souls, the breastplate of righteousness to protect the spirit breathing in us, the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of fear, the belt of truth 
to banish confusion, and the shoes of the gospel of peace to bring comfort and healing. Gracious God, our hope is in you. Resurrecting God, we open our hearts to the work of your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us, renew us, and remake us into the image of your chosen one, Jesus Christ. May he increase as we decrease. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you, and also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The peace, peace of the, of the Lord, Lord be with you. With you. Peace, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also 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 with you. Also with you. To all. Welcome. Good morning. And welcome to our online worship with the Episcopal community of Saints Luke and James in Minneapolis. We are so glad you could be with us today and hope you will return often to worship with us. 
Each Sunday we have a gathering time on Zoom at 9.30, one half hour before the 10 o'clock YouTube service. After the dismissal, we invite you to click on the link below the YouTube and join us for a virtual coffee hour. An adult forum completes our schedule for the morning following the coffee hour, and it offers a robust series of presentations and discussions. Now, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.